Hi everyone, this is YML and today we are going to talk about why recurrent neural networks suffer from vanishing gradients. This is the first part of a series of two videos and in this video I will talk about why this problem exists and in the next part I will discuss about some solutions that the community has found to the problem of vanishing gradients in recurrent neural networks. Let's begin by briefly explaining what a recurrent neural network is and on what kind of data it works on. So the recurrent neural network usually works on uh, sequential or time series data. So a sample of your data should look something like that. x0 for the first time step, x1 for the second time step, x3 for the third time step and so on. And what a recurrent neural network does is to take the first time step, x0, multiply it by some matrix, wx. And also, because it's a recurrent neural network, you have like some kind of memory h, we'll note here with h0, that it's modified and uh, tra traversed from one time, time step to another time step. And we take this hidden state, we multiply it with WH, and we add the results of these two operations. We take the result and we multiply it by another matrix WO, and we obtain the output for the first time step. Okay, now what you do next is you take the second time step. We, you multiply it by the same matrix Wx and here you uh, give to the next step the result of this operation which is H1 you multiply it again by, again by Wh you add those two values together and the result you multiply it again by the matrix Wo to obtain the result for the second time step O1. And let's do it one more time. You take the third time step, you multiply by Wx, you give to the next time step the result of the previous time step, H2, you multiply this one by Wh, add those two values together, and at the end you obtain the result for the third timestamp O2. Now depending on your problem you can compute the loss function in various ways but to simplify things let's suppose that in this problem we have to predict the value for each of the step in our input data so your loss in the end will make use of all these values Okay, so now we have computed the loss. So now we can compute the gradients for our weights using the backpropagation algorithm. And let's try to do that for the last timestamp. Okay, now I see that here I put like an x3, this should be like an x2. Okay. The first step in the backpropagation algorithm computes this partial derivative dl to do2 then it computes the second partial derivative which is do2 to this matrix okay and then let's try to compute the gradient for this matrix here, the weights WH. This will be a little bit more difficult. So let's see. We have the following. So we have DL to DWH equals to DL DO2 multiplied by, we are applying the chain rule here, DO2 of the h2 
and here we can also compute the following because the O2 depends both of WO and on H2 so we can also compute the O2 DH2 and finally here we have that DH2 DW these two terms here are really easy to compute and we are interested more in this one here so remember that H2 is equal to Wx x1 plus Wh h1 so when we compute the derivative with respect to wh we remove this term this term doesn't matter and here we have the following derivative let's just quickly write okay so the o2 multiplied by the o2 the h2 so this is the derivative of product we can compute it by firstly considering h1 a constant and taking the derivative of the wh and we obtain h1 and then we do the opposite we consider wh a constant and we take the derivative uh, with respect to of the wh with respect to h1 so we have wh and the derivative of H1 with respect to W H and now what we have to do you can see that we have the H1 the W H here so we have to go back one step and compute the derivative again and remember that H1 equals to W X X zero plus w h h zero so when we derive this with respect to w h this term here disappears again and by using the same trick on the second term what we obtain the following so we have dl d o2 d o2 d h2 okay so we have h1 plus w h h0 plus d h0 d w h and again we have this term here so we have to go again back one step here for this time dh0 to dwh and just let's write here to have it down dh1 dwh however because i'm out of space i won't write the derivation for the last step and I will instead write the derivation for a time step y. So we have the following. So we have the L to the W H equals two. So for a time step y, the L O Y multiplied by the O Y D H Y. And here we have the following. So we have the sum from g, j equals to y minus 1 to 0 of h, j. And here we have a product over the matrix d, w, h. And here I have to be very careful with the indices. So we have the following so from k equals to y 
minus j minus 1 to 0. Okay, and we raise the wh to the power of k. So to recap, we have the following formula to compute the gradients for the matrix wh. And what is the problem here? The problem comes from this term here, the product over the matrix WH. And what happens here? So for the first case, let's consider that our matrix has values between 0 and 1. And let's suppose that we are trying to compute the gradients for a later step in the sequence let's say for y equals to a hundred so basically in when we try to compute the gradients we have to rise at some point wh to the power of 100 and what happens to the terms in wh when we rise to this power and their values are between 0 and 1, then all the values in the wh will tend to 0. So this means that for a later step in our sequence, when we run the backpropagation algorithm, we get like no training signal, which is known as the vanishing gradient problem. And now let's see what happens in the opposite case when we are outside the 0, 1 interval. So when the absolute value of the values inside the WH is bigger than 1. And again, we will look at a later step. We'll take again like y equals to 100. And when we try to raise the matrix to the power 100 then in this case because our values are bigger than one when we raise them to the power 100 so or a bigger power than that then those values will tend like to infinity will get like really really big and this is known as the exploding gradient problem So I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did then make sure to not miss the second part where I try to explain several solutions to this problem of vanishing gradients in recurrent neural networks.